Cornicterus is a serious problem where otherwise normal children can suffer lifelong neurologic consequences. It shouldn't happen. This is a condition that actually is totally preventable if children or infants when, that have done this can be identified and then treated appropriately. I always say this, I, I don't think the human language can do a very good job of explaining the depth of disability that these kids live with. No one can get cornicterus. Cornicterus basically ruins your life. And it's heartbreaking. I mean, we have children here who are not mentally retarded. They're not cognitively impaired by this disease at all. And yet they're locked in bodies that just don't work. And they're going to lead very, very challenging lives. It's like if you were to tie your hands, your feet together, put cotton in your ears, gag your mouth, and then live your life. That's sort of what Krista faces each day. I look at Nathaniel, and I think there is not one day in his life that he doesn't have to give 110 percent. He doesn't have a choice. The hearing loss that he has is called auditory neuropathy and that's associated with um, bilirubin damage. Sixty percent of newborns do have some level of jaundice. Uh, the jaundice is, is a, uh, an expression of an elevated bilirubin level and bilirubin in newborns uh, is, is a toxin and should be recognized as such. Let moms and dads know that their babies can be hurt by jaundice. It's not like a rash. It's not like a common cold. This, this has injured our kids permanently. I was told that jaundice was like a cold. It would get worse before it got better. No one said it was like a pneumonia and it could kill you. The fact that, uh, that infants are not routinely tested uh, for this toxin uh, is difficult to understand, especially when one recognizes that the test is available uh, relatively easy to perform and inexpensive. This is something that we ought to be able to avoid. And we do have the capability of avoiding that by screening babies before they go home from the hospital. We know, we know about jaundice. We know what causes cornicterus. And we know that if we get the right tests and the right treatments, we can prevent this. I think the most important thing to remember behind this is these are innocent children. These children had just as much chance as everyone else, and were not given that opportunity. And now I watched my daughter and my son, who had the same blood compatibility. One got a test, one didn't. And I watched them play side by side with two incredibly different futures. I find it uh, exasperating and frustrating uh, when you see the tremendous damage this can do and how it affects families when we know we have the information at hand to do a lot right now. This is an emergency. Babies are being injured. And, you know, while we're sitting here talking about this, it's happening again. I gave a talk to the Child Neurology Society, and this is, these are the pediatricians who are neurologists like myself. And I asked for a show of hands of how many had seen a cornicterus. This was in October 2002. And almost every hand went up in the audience. So within a very short period of time, the moms and the doctors were actually connecting the dots and recognizing that this wasn't just, th these weren't outliers in the healthcare system, this was a major hole in the safety net in healthcare. One of the recent recommendations for the treatment, for the management of neonatal jaundice includes visual inspection. It's very questionable now whether a standard of visual inspection alone is sufficient uh, to allow us to pick up the baby who is at risk for cornicterus from an elevated bilirubin. It's very difficult, particularly in infants of darker complexion, to use visual inspection. In babies who have darker skin color, like mine, uh, you may find that it is difficult to assess how much jaundice a newborn baby actually has. Practitioners may in fact be right a lot of the time. Let's say 90% of the time, 95% of the time. The point is that's not good enough. We believe that screening all babies is um, quite simply the safest way to go. The baby is safer, the physician is safer, everyone is safer. If the most accurate means we have of assessing and predicting a baby's bilirubin is used. And that involves standardizing some of the procedures, establishing guidelines that everybody can follow 
uh, so that things will be done consistently. Babies get a, a blood test done at discharge anyway or prior to discharge and the same heel prick that's used to for the blood test for metabolic screening could be used to also get a bilirubin level. The cost of doing the analysis for bilirubin to the institution is usually less than a dollar. That's it. Our kids' life care plans are between $10 million and $25 million for their lifetime to take care of their medical costs. Not only is it the right thing to do to screen all, day, all babies, but financially, it also makes sense. How can we say, well, you know, we're not going to test, and, you know, if they come back in and it looks high, well, then we'll do something about it. By then, it could be too late. Like most of our kids, it was too late. We have an opportunity to prevent something because we know how to effectively treat it. And that's an opportunity in the world of developmental disabilities that doesn't really often come along. For heaven's sakes, these babies, if you keep them from getting brain damage, they won't be fine all the rest of their lives. As a parent of a child who has such a severe injury, it's chilling to experience the healthcare system not reacting quickly to this, not implementing a universal um, screen. It, it, it's confusing and really disappointing, but that's why PICK has chosen to partner with the system to, to, to fast track change. Our main reason for doing this is to make sure that Kernicterus doesn't happen to any more families. Um, it's easily preventable, and we just need to do everything we can to get the word out. 60% of all babies get jaundice. Those are, those are real numbers. Those are real babies. If I know what I know now, I have a normal daughter. Had I known to ask for a dollar test for Cal, I would have done it. I don't want any more members of this club. I don't want any more families to be in here. It doesn't have to happen. Children who are discharged from the nursery should all have a bilirubin level taken at the time of discharge to establish whether they are at risk or not. There is absolutely no reason why this is not universally practiced in the U.S. to ensure that every newborn baby has a safe experience with newborn jaundice. And that can be done on a routine basis and we will pick up virtually every baby that's destined to develop a high bilirubin level and putting them at risk for kernicterus. The evidence is clear and, and the expert consensus is there that this would lead to a reduction and eventually elimination of kernicterus. There are a number of disorders in newborn children that are equally serious for which little or nothing can be done. Here's a serious disorder for which prevention can be perfect or close to perfect. So why not focus on this where you can make a huge difference in the life of the child forever and their family? We're of the opinion that because kernicterus is a preventable disorder, that one case is one case too many. One case of kernicterus is one too many. We can prevent them all. Prevent this. Two words, prevent this.